The City of God was written under very specific circumstances, and its goal was closely associated with the work's historical context. The Roman Empire had long been suffering incursions from foreign tribes. This culminated in 410 when the Visigoths, under their king Alaric, invaded Italy and sacked the city. This was a traumatic event for all Romans, and it led to much soul-searching and questioning about how such a thing could have happened. Although it initially persecuted the Christians, Rome, under the Emperor Constantine, stopped the persecutions and adopted Christianity as the official religion. In the wake of the sack of Rome, there were many who ascribed the calamity to the adoption of Christianity and the abandoning of the old gods. Rome had stood strong for eight centuries while it worshipped the pagan gods. Now, however, only a short time after it had embraced Christianity, it had been sacked by a foreign invader. This strengthened the voices of the critics of the new faith. The City of God was written during this time immediately after the fall of Rome and in response to those who held Christianity responsible for it. The idea that Augustine presents with the City of God is that there is a spiritual city that represents the Christian church or community and which stands in contrast to the mundane city, that is, Rome or the secular world in general. The idea of a City of God comes from the Psalms and Augustine seizes on the motif for his own purposes. Much of the work is devoted to sketching the contrast between the distinctive characters of the two cities. The inhabitants of the city of man are dedicated to earthly values, wealth, power, pleasure, etc. By contrast, the inhabitants of the city of God cultivate higher, more spiritual values. Augustine thus creates an implicit dualism whereby the earthly city represents the body and the heavenly city, the soul. This can also be conceived as the distinction between nature and spirit. The message is one of consolation. Although the empire of this world has fallen, nonetheless the city of God remains. Here, one of the overarching themes of the work becomes evident, the relation of the outer to the inner. The external world is sinful and transitory, whereas the truth is something inward and enduring. Thus, the city of God is immune to any attack by the forces of this world. Its followers cannot be harmed by the disasters which affect the mundane sphere. With this idea, Augustine marks an important milestone in the development of inwardness and subjectivity. The city of God is addressed to Augustine's disciple, Flavius Marcellinus, known as Marcellinus of Carthage, who was a high-ranking official in the Roman Empire. The emperor, Honorius, tasked Marcellinus with resolving the dispute between the Catholics and the Donatists at the Council of Carthage in 411. One obstacle in this context was the proconsul of Af Africa, Volsanius, who held Christianity responsible for the subversion of traditional Roman values that ultimately ended in the sack of Rome. Marcellinus appealed to Augustine for help in winning over Volsianus to Christianity, and the City of God was Augustine's response to the request. In the end, Marcellinus had to repress the Donatists with military force, which resulted in great bloodshed. He himself was later accused of leading a rebellion and, despite Augustine's efforts to prevent it, was executed in the year 413. The City of God is a massive work that's not easy to digest. It consists of 22 separate books divided into two large parts. In the first part, which consists of books 1 to 10, Augustine is concerned to criticize traditional Roman religion and philosophy. This involves a critique of Roman polytheism and the notion that the abandonment of the Roman gods was the cause of the sack of the city. The second part, books 11 to 22, he dedicates to sketching the differences between the two cities. He outlines the origins of the two cities, books 11 to 14, their development, 15 to 18, and their ultimate fate, books 19 to 22. This gives him the occasion to extol the virtues of Christianity and to expound a number of important doctrines such as the original sin and the last judgment. The work also presents an influential philosophy of history that traces the story of human development as a struggle between good and evil. Augustine's theory of history represents an important break with the Greco-Roman conception of history. We've noted that in the works of Herodotus and Thucydides, there was a tendency to conceive of history in terms of circles or cycles. There were specific motifs that recurred through time. In Herodotus, the goddess Nemesis works consistently to assure that whatever has grown too high is cut down to the appropriate size. In Thucydides, the common features of human nature ensure that people react in similar ways under similar circumstances. 
Thus, specific events repeat themselves again and again, and there's little sense of development. By contrast, Augustine presents a theory of history that's linear. There's a development towards an end, a teleology, that corresponds to God's plan. This is a new way of thinking about human history as a form of development.